So hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Project Cars 2 video where in today's video we're going to be looking at the Group A Mercedes at Hockenheim. Let's roll that intro. So as I'm sure you've all heard me mention before, you need to spend probably about an hour uh, driving around the circuit, trying to just get to know the circuit a little more, try and get to know the car, see how it handles, and just trying to build your first impressions of where the car actually has a few issues in its handling. So after spending about an hour on the game, uh, just on this circuit, I managed to get just under the 150s, uh, hitting a 149.9, and this is where it all starts really. This is the process of trying to find out what's wrong with the car and where I can make it better. So if we just go for taking a drive around the circuit, obviously I'm just chasing the ghost that I've set. So there's a 149.9 ghost that's uh, within the, the visuals. And we're just gonna try and see how consistent I am with staying with that ghost. Just using the setup as it is, I've not made any changes at the moment. Uh, the only changes that I have made is with the steering ratio just because of the wheel I'm using. So you're just looking for problems with the setup as it is. So just see turning in there, I get a lot of rotation uh, through the initial phase of the corner. The ghost just pulling away slightly due to that uh, bad exit off the last corner. And we're just losing time down this straight here. Still trying to find that perfect brake spot coming into the hairpin. And as we come off the hairpin turn, you can see the ghost still ahead, just trying to get understanding really whether I need to be in first or second on the exit to that corner. And coming into this next bend, you can see the car just over rotates a little bit on corner entry. You see, I'm having to make that little correction again. So you can see, that I just want to try and get the car to stop rotating so much on, on corner entry. That's one of the big issues initially. So maybe an issue with the brake bias. And then coming into the stadium section and on this one, the car just doesn't seem to rotate enough. So whether that's an issue with me not using the brake pedal correctly or not braking early enough for that corner. It's not always down to the setup, so just bear that in mind. And again, just just a bit a bit too much on that corner. So let's uh, let's have a look at the setup changes I change going into this one. So initially I go in and make a few changes to the longitudinal weight bias, just seeing if by moving the ballast around it makes a tiny bit of difference. So just closing out the brake ducts seeing as they're not overeating at all. Make a tiny adjustment to the brake balance and reduce the power ramp just to try and stop uh, too much um, too much rotation on corner exit and then just lowering the tyre pressures just to try and get a little bit more grip. As you can see with the brake balance I only moved it with just one click uh, more towards the front so on corner entry but hopefully it's going to try and um, turn the car in a little less. Obviously there, we're still going a little bit too far, so I'll address that probably a little bit later. I think I ended up changing the engine braking to try and stop the rotation, and maybe even the coast ramp on corner entry. So yeah, I'll we'll just see how this lap goes. Still just looking out on the left-hand side here to try and, that, try and find my perfect braking spot. Not sure whether to brake sort of at the blue and white curbs or at the 100 yard board. 
obviously you can see the ghost still getting a better exit on that corner so there's definitely some work to do there as you can see here definitely find uh, some more time in this corner maybe a few less corrections or a better breaking spot on the right hand side but certainly caught up with the ghost quite considerably through that section And again through this corner just seemed to find a little bit um, more speed or a little bit earlier on the accelerator and just catch right up with the ghost there and again through this section i don't think i ran as wide but still losing too much time through that section something i really need to work on there but i think through this section just managed to find more speed more grip uh, the car's not rotating as much on corner exit I think that's just with the uh, adjustment to the power ramp. It's not, it's not oversteering so much on corner exit. So it's only a small gain on the Ghost, just just one tenth really. But I choose just to change the Ghost that I'm chasing, uh, just because I'm finding a better line through some of the corners. And as you can see here, even just arriving back. I'm just thinking that the car's still rotating too much, so I decided to increase the power ramp. Have a little think about adjusting the brake pedal, uh, but leave that as it is. Move on to uh, the camber angles and just, just thinking about acceleration off some of the corners and just lowering that camber angle at the rear just to try and aid in acceleration. Obviously, the lower the camber angle is, the better straight line acceleration you're going to get, especially out of that hairpin. Uh, and even down some of the straights, you'll notice it's got far better top speed. So one of the things that you're always trying to think about is lowering your camber angles because they will aid very much in acceleration. Obviously at the detriment of cornering ability, so you're going to lose some of that grip going through some of the corners. So it really is a, uh, it's always a balancing act between cornering um, speed and acceleration. So always thinking about that, but again, just coming into this corner, I still think I'm trying to find uh, where the best braking spot is but as you can see there just accelerating away just leaving that ghost in the rear view mirror so that really did pay off making that adjustment Now I've already ran another lap before this, uh, which I didn't bother putting in the video, but at this point I was much further up on my ghost. So I'm still trying to find the best lines through some of these corners, but still really, um, really pleased with those few adjustments that I've made so far. They've made a big difference, although I've still not found that perfect line. I think I could have been uh, probably at least five tenths up on this lap coming into this last turn, but still, still not perfect still looking for time as you can see i've knocked another three tenths off the lap time there but still just going back into the settings and just thinking that the car could accelerate a lot better changing gears is a lot slower in this car because it's using a h pattern gearbox so trying to reduce using that sixth gear really and bring the gear ratios down a bit and obviously reducing that engine braking as well try and get the car to stop turning so much and then again that a little, a little adjustment on the coast ramp to again stop the car from turning so much on corner entry let's see how this one goes and just a quick mention regarding the gears it, usually where the uh, indicator is on the right hand side there as i'm changing gear you can see the uh, number four, number five, etc. As you get the red line, th that sort of it, it mentions really that's the place to change gear. But I did find in this car that really holding out till it hits the red line, re really hitting the rev limiter, does seem to add that little bit more to each gear and it just pulls that little bit extra in each gear. And as you can see, opening out the gear ratios has made a huge difference, really. It really does pull away from the ghost on the straights 
just using that torque from the engine far better the low down torque works much better through the gears and not having to change up through the gears so quickly it's holding that gear just seems to work so much better the car feels like it's rotating a little bit less i'm having to make less corrections as much as you're never going to get rid of them in this car because there is so much torque from the rear end it does seem to be just handling much better i think and it, it really does show just looking at that ghost how much it's disappearing so i'm really pleased with those little adjustments i've made and you can tell just making those little adjustments it does make such a difference to how the car performs So just coming across the line there, hitting a 149.2. And yes, they are little increments each time, but over time, these little increments become seconds. So just remember, make small adjustments, don't go rushing into things. So you can see, having had good results from uh, changing the gear ratio, just go back in and uh, just see about just changing it a little bit lower again, just reducing the front camber angles again as that's going to benefit the rear camber angle and lowering the ride height. Uh, I hadn't adjusted that so far, so I thought I'd give that another go as well, just to get the car as low as it can, lowering that center of gravity to help corner and ability. And like I said, just, just trying to reduce that gear ratio. So now along the first section of the start finish straight, I'm no longer going into fifth gear either on that section. So just four gears and it's just trying to eke out as much power in each gear as possible and just seeing those benefits again that ghosts straight away in the rear view mirror and that's what I want them to see. I'm still using that old ghost uh, 140, uh, 149.8 I think it is. I think as we get into this stage, you can see that the ghost is really much further behind. Those adjustments have really helped, definitely paid off. As we come across the line, it's the first time into the 148s. So we're now into the 148.9s. So coming back in, I decide to lower the cambers even further, uh, dropping a full degree on both front and rear. And as soon as I start, you can see um, straight away that I've just gone that step too far and the effects are almost instant really that there's just not enough grip from the front end of the car not so much the rear initially uh, but even on turning just into turn one it just feels like the front end's not got as much response not got as much grip and i'm just running wide through turn one and again later in the lap same lap it just doesn't want to turn in so going back to the drawing board I'm just adding a little bit more camber back on the front end of the car and then uh, go back out and obviously if you adjust the front and you don't adjust the rear you get that negative effect and you can see having one at the rear just just not enough rear grip and um, so going back to the drawing board once again obviously you make negative effects you need to go back and correct them we're still getting a low lap time but it's still having a negative effect on how the car's performing so needing to go back into the setup and just add some of that rear camber back to the uh, back to the mix and i also made a tiny adjustment to the rear suspension just making it a tiny bit softer to again try and assist in that uh, rear grip obviously you're taking a little bit away uh, with the camber so adding a tiny bit with a softer rear suspension and coming back in, you can see that the ghost's miles away in the distance, but this is the second lap I've come back 
and I'm finding that I'm running wide at that very same corner uh, two laps in a row so I'm starting to wonder whether the front grip's gone away slightly um, so I go back in and uh, decide to make a tiny adjustment just to the tyres this time uh, just trying to reduce the tyre pressures just to try and add a little bit more grip at the front end without adjusting those cambers again obviously I took some of the camber away so it's going to have that negative effect on front grip so as you can see just rounding out that lap you can see it makes it through the last section and the ghost again is still in the distance and we're into the 148.8 only a minor minor uh, win over the last fastest lap but it's still just trying to adjust little bits of the car to make it feel better overall so you can be more consistent you can see i've gone back out to the main menu now and reloaded the ghost that's 148.8 the 149.8 one's just getting too far now and i'm i'm not i won't be able to see the differences that i'm making uh, as obvious so as i come back in now i'm just going to resave the ghost that i've been working on and save that setup so I've got the 148.8 and then I reload the test setup that I've been using and I'll carry on making adjustments on that one so I've still got the previous setup that I was using so at this stage I thought I would have a look at messing around with the uh, downforce I don't seem to be able to take anything off the rear uh, just to see if that aids the acceleration uh, down the back straights uh, so I decided to take it off the front Obviously that's going to have a bit of a negative effect on corner entry because we're going to lose the front end grip. So this was a case of see what happens. I think as you can see what happens was the fact that I added it straight back. It was such a negative effect on how the car performed. I think adjusting the um, downforce wasn't the way to go to make this car quicker. As you can see after adjusting the uh, downforce I had a little look at removing some of the uh, longitudinal weight bias uh, putting it forward and backwards and it was it didn't seem to pay um, any dividends really in moving it more rearward or more forward so i eventually tried both variations and went back to putting it back to the center i then started to think about the fact that i'd actually reduced the ride height of the car to its lowest settings so going back to the bump stops, obviously the bump stops were adjusted at the same time. So as well as lowering the car using the suspension, you need to lower the bump stops in order for the car to be able to sit even lower. So that was one of the adjustments I made there. And the other adjustment was the uh, radiator. Just thought I'd close out the radiator and see what a difference that made. So here we are then going into the final lap where I managed to hit a 147.8. Even through turn one, you can see I'm just picking up in front of the ghosts. Uh, just made such a difference, those two last little changes. The car's feeling much better. It's uh, handling a lot better. It's uh, picking up speed nicely out of the corners, getting that power down much earlier than previous laps. Obviously with all the extra driving, I'm picking better lines through the corners. I'm getting more confident with my braking spots as well. And just getting a real feel for how the car handles, especially as it slows down, you get the car to rotate and you just sort of hear the engine note change. And before the engine's sort of dying down, you're just wanting to get back on that accelerator to pick up those engine revs. So it's not bogging down so much. Obviously we've lowered the gear ratios so just trying to keep the momentum through the engine, keep the car flowing, not, not twisting too much without getting back on the power. And you can see from the Ghost, it's just handling so much better. Obviously under race conditions and lobby conditions where you're gonna have uh, performance impacting damage or full damage, you're gonna need to open out that radiator. But for this exercise, I was just trying to get into the 147s and just trying to get the car performing uh, much better than using the standard setup, trying to make the car a little bit more competitive. But as I mentioned, you, you could possibly even uh, reduce the braking uh, brake ducts as well to try and get a little bit, bit more uh, top speed. But yeah, I was really happy with that lap and the Ghost's absolutely miles away, hitting a 147.8.
So taking a quick look over the setup, obviously we're going to be using the slick tyres because that's the only tyres we've got an option to use. Reduce the tyre pressures to aid in grip and the brake pressure is going to be something you're going to use yourself. Just bringing that brake bias slightly towards the front of the car and lowering out those brake ducts just to try and reduce the temperatures a little bit more. Obviously you could reduce those a little bit further I think and moving to the um, downforce, I haven't really touched this at all and moving the longitudinal weight bias just really to the centre of the car didn't really benefit the car uh, moving from front to rear. Haven't touched the caster angles and the camber angles have been reduced slightly down to 2.5 and lowered the car as low as it's going to go. Um, slight adjustments through the rear camber as well and a tiny adjustment to the rear springs just to try and increase that rear grip. Obviously, uh, just talking about camber angles, the less you're going to have at the rear, the more you're going to aid in, in acceleration, but you're going to reduce that stability through the corners if you start reducing the camera angles at the rear too much. The steering ratio I adjusted purely because I'm using the McLaren GT3 wheel and I'm not wanting to cross my hands at any stage, so just bring that down quite a bit. And the bump stops have been dropped in accordance with the uh, lowering of the springs in the suspension just to try and get the car to sit nice and low. Obviously I've lowered out the radiator but it's going to cause damage if you're using it in a race so I'd probably increase that up to something like 70%, 50% depending on how long the race is. And just adding a tiny bit less braking uh, to the rear of the car just to, to stop that rotation and making the gears a lot longer using the final drive ratios just to eke out not needing to use sixth gear. You could accelerate much better using a standard H pattern gearbox rather than the paddle shifters as that will in increase the speed of the changing gears and a few minor adjustments to the power ramp just to stop the car rotating too much on corner exit and the coast ramp just bringing that right the way down to stop the car rotating too much on corner entry. If ever you're struggling with acceleration out of the corners and the car spinning too much, I'd always try to increase the power ramp more towards 90 than the other way. You'll find the car much easier to control on corner exit. And that's the setup. So here we are then, going to be taking a quick drive around the circuit. Now one thing to do right from the off is get used to turning this car using the brake pedal. You want to be sort of heavy on the brake pedal and then just accelerating so as you, you're pressing on the brake pedal and you're coming off the brake pedal, you're just going to be wanting to apply that acceleration to get the car to rotate. So you, you're braking nice in a straight line and then accelerating hard just to try and get the car to slide through the corners. Now this car does slide and it's going to be one of those things that you're going to either love or hate and in my in my eyes this is a great car to learn with. Just breaking in between sort of or just after the 100 yard board there and then getting the car to turn in. Listen out for the change in the engine notes. As soon as it starts to sort of bog down you want to be hard on that accelerator even if you've got to put on a tiny bit of opposite lock to get the car to turn. Changing up comes right at the very end of the rev, rev range here so take the car right to the red line and then braking just sort of around here somewhere getting the car slowed really in a straight line before you start thinking of turning the car stay in second gear for that corner and use as much of that curb as you want really it, it, it's of no uh, issue really accelerating on the curbs getting a nice early turn in the car does struggle to turn in a little bit through that corner and then braking in a nice straight line and get the car to really sort of clip that apex if you can. Getting the car nice and straight again and a little lift off as you come over that lip there. It does seem to um, oversteer too much if you carry on the power there. Right away up into fourth gear and then coming off. A little dab of the brake pedals, nice and easy as you come through there and then back on the power. Looking for that board on the right hand side, the 50 yard board braking just a tiny bit before it coming all the way down into second gear i thought was best and then let the car run wide out onto the curb and then up into third gear stay in third gear for this one just a tiny nip at the brakes and just allow the car to run uh, least line of resistance as you come through there and then back on the power and across the line So 
So I'd like to just say a quick thanks to all the guys that took part during the uh, the test session that I tried to organise through Facebook. Um, a number of guys uh, picking up the sword and uh, or the wheel and coming into the lobby just to try and see how this car performed and just to take part in one of my videos. So after 20 minutes of qualifying, I still only managed to hit a 149.1, .1, which was fairly disappointing considering how fast it felt during the time trial event. But even still, I was quite surprised uh, with DISL uh, in the skyline hitting a 147.9, but it later turns out, having had a look, a look on the leaderboards, that you can sort of hit a 144 in the skyline, so no surprise with him uh, setting such a good lap time. So let's get on to the race and have a little look at the replay. So as the race kicks off and uh, steady away at around the 7,000 mark as per usual, and managed to get a fairly good start without uh, picking up any sort of penalties I thought I was quite good off the line to be honest but straight in obviously you're carrying a little bit more fuel than you're used to driving and I'm running wide straight out of turn one and the car's just feeling a little bit heavy under braking so one thing to remember just think about how much fuel you've got on board and just how different the car's going to feel uh, during a race carrying uh, eight laps worth of fuel uh, as opposed to five so it shouldn't really feel that much different but for some reason I find it initially fairly hard uh, just to get a, a feel for how the car is performing uh, straight out of the box so a few little uh, mistakes on corner entries on my part but all in all uh, managed to maintain second position throughout lap one and uh, start to build a little bit of consistency after finishing lap one we're moving into lap two and I'm just trying to get a little bit closer to D, I call him DSL and um, as he's getting a little bit onto this back straight you can see the car just really does perform amazingly on the straights, the skyline just really does pull away and I think it's quite clear to see that catching this guy is just not really going to be an option, the car's just much faster in a straight line and I'm always going to be on the back foot really unless he makes a mistake into some of the corners, I think he's got the acceleration nailed. Moving into lap three, and again at that long back straight, you can see he just pulls away. It's just not really going to be uh, an option to overtake him. This is probably one of the, the main parts that you would think about overtaking, and just getting close to this guy in the straights is just not an option. So as you can see from my RS dash lap times, managing to hit a 149 is pretty consistent for the first couple of laps and then I have a minor little wobble in lap 6 as I'm coming down to this first corner and I noticed a car off to the left hand side. I initially thought it was the leader of the race that uh, took a slightly slight little run off and I'd just lose my concentration for a split second there uh, which seems to impact the rest of the lap really as I'm trying to figure out whether he's actually gone off or not. But it doesn't appear so, and uh, it's just a case of getting your head back down, trying to get that concentration back in and uh, finish the lap. But eventually uh, the race comes to a finish and DSL takes the chequered flag and I managed to come in second place. Just a big thank you to uh, Yes Joe Lad, Dad Trucker and Only One Simon for uh, joining in the race and to everyone else that took part during that one and I'll leave you with the replay. Thanks for watching as always, and if you have got any comments, please do leave them in the uh, comment section, and I'll always get back to any of the comments that get left. Please do hit that thumbs up button as well. Uh, it helps all the algorithms and all that stuff on YouTube. And if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, please do so. It would really help try and build that channel and reach that infamous 1,000 subscriber mark. But I'll leave you with the replay uh, from the race and thanks for watching as always, stay safe and ciao for now.